Hey everyone. So have you ever been in that situation, you know, at a restaurant and things are getting, well, a little awkward with the service yeah. and you just wish you had the perfect phrases to smooth things over? Well, today's deep dive is all about mastering those tricky customer conversations in English. And you know what's so interesting about this is that good communication, especially in these situations, it can actually make or break the entire experience. It's true. Yeah. It's like suddenly you're not just ordering a coffee, you're navigating a social minefield. But don't worry, we're here to equip you with the language tools to handle it all. We've got a whole bunch of useful phrases to unpack from our sources, starting with, well, the essentials. Like how often do you actually use the word grab in a sentence? Honestly, more often than I'd like to admit. Right. But think about it. Grab has that like quick, casual energy to it. Can I grab a coffee, please? It just works in those fast paced settings. Totally. It's like you're speaking the language of efficiency, which let's be honest, is often what we're looking for in a busy cafe. Absolutely. And then there's go with, you know, when you're staring at the menu, totally overwhelmed by the choices, using go with just makes the whole process smoother. Like, I think I'll go with the pasta. Boom. Decision made. It's like you're saying, I'm confident in my choice. Let's do this. Exactly. And it can actually make the whole interaction less, I don't know, transactional. Mm -hmm. But what about when you're the one behind the counter trying to guide someone towards that hidden gem on the menu? That's where I think would recommend comes mm -hmm. in clutch. It's so much more persuasive than just stating a fact. 100%. It's all about that subtle nudge, right? Like, I would recommend the salmon. It's incredibly fresh, way more enticing than just the salmon is good. Right. You're not just serving food. You're sharing an experience. Yeah. And speaking of experience, let's talk about the magic of complimentary. Mm. I mean, who doesn't love a little something extra? It's all in the delivery. Seriously. Saying your dessert is complimentary this evening, it just sounds so much more I don't know, luxurious. Absolutely. It elevates the whole thing, makes the customer feel valued. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, last but not least, we've all been there, staring at the menu, completely overwhelmed, and the server comes up like, ready to order, but you're not ready. What do you do? Panic. Uh-huh, maybe. But the real pro move, still working on, simple, effective, buys you some time without any awkward silence. I'm still working on my meal, thank you. It's all about setting boundaries even in a casual setting. Couldn't agree more. Okay, but how do all these phrases actually like play out in a real conversation? It's one thing to know the words, but another to actually use them, you know? Right, it's like having all the ingredients, but no recipe. Exactly. So let's pick up a little scenario here. Imagine we're in a bustling cafe, the kind with the aroma of freshly ground coffee beans and the gentle hum of conversation, you know? Ooh, I can practically smell it. Right. I'm going to play both parts here, channeling my inner server A&D customer, just to show you how seamlessly these phrases can fit into a real-world interaction. Ready? Okay, here we go. Good evening. Are you ready to order? Or would you like a little more time? Adopts a slightly higher pitch. Mm. I think I'll go to the BLT, but could I grab a coffee first while I decide on a side? Back to the server voice. Absolutely. And might I recommend our sweet potato fries? They pair perfectly with the BLT. Smooth. See, it's all about that natural flow. And trust me, I've used still working on more times than I can count. It's a lifesaver when you just need a moment to decide, you know. But these get really interesting when we start looking at those trickier customer interactions. Like, what happens when someone's getting impatient? Oh, yeah. Those can be tough. Right. So picture this. You're at a packed restaurant. Orders are flying. And you can just feel the tension in the air. The source material actually uses the word impatient to describe these situations, which I think is super helpful because it helps us like understand where the other person is coming from, even if they're being a little difficult. Totally. It's like their frustration is less about you and more about the situation itself. Exactly. And speaking of situations, the material makes a great point about the difference between fast food and fancy settings. It's all about reading the room and adjusting your language accordingly. You know? Right. Like you wouldn't use the same tone in a casual burger joint as you would in a Michelin star restaurant. Exactly. At a burger joint, you might be like, hey, can I grab a refill when you get a chance? But in a fancier setting, you might say, excuse me, would it be possible to have some more water? It's subtle, but it makes a difference. It's like language etiquette. Exactly. And speaking of language, there's a term from the research that I wanted to touch on briefly, waitress. Now, I know we want to be mindful of using inclusive language whenever possible, but it's still important to be aware of this term in case we encounter it. 
Right, like in historical context or something. Exactly. Like the waitress in that old movie was so glamorous. <laughs> okay, now remember how we talked about that casual vibe being so important? Well, the material actually uses the word register to describe this idea of matching your tone to the setting. It's like choosing the right outfit for the occasion. You know? I love that analogy. Right. A casual atmosphere calls for a more relaxed, friendly style of speaking. But in a formal setting, you've got to bring out the big guns, grammatically speaking. Totally. It's amazing how much of an impact our word choice can have, even if we're not consciously aware of it. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious, what happens when we find ourselves face to face with a truly difficult customer? like someone who's beyond impatient, that's where things get really interesting. All right, so we've got all these great strategies, right? But sometimes you just encounter that customer who, well, let's just say they're having a day. Oh, absolutely. It's like they walk straight out of a sitcom. Totally. Yeah. And our source material actually provides this like perfect role play scenario to illustrate how to handle those really tough interactions. Ready to dive in. Hit me with it. I'm ready to be challenged. Okay, so picture this. Crowded restaurant, lunchtime rush, You've been waiting for your food for, like, forever. I'm going to play the impatient customer, and you be the server, keeping that cool, calm, and collected demeanor. All right, let's do it. Bring on the drama. Adopts a slightly aggressive tone. Excuse me, I ordered my food over 20 minutes ago. Is this, like, normal wait time here? I apologize for the delay, sir. We're a bit backed up in the kitchen right now, but I'll check on your order immediately. A check? I'm starving here. When can I expect my food, really? I understand your frustration, sir. Can I offer you a complimentary appetizer while you wait? Okay, stop right there. See, even though I was, like, laying it on thick with the impatience, you remained calm, you apologized, and you offered a solution. <laughs> well, it's all about de-escalation, right? Yeah. Meeting that intensity with calmness can often diffuse the situation. And you did it so smoothly. But it's not just about the delivery. Those power phrases, I apologize, complimentary appetizer, immediately, they're like magic words. They really are. But I think it's fascinating how those phrases actually tap into Hume psychology. Like, I apologize, shows empathy, complimentary, adds a little something extra, immediately reassures them that you're taking action. It's brilliant. You're not just speaking, you're strategically communicating which is such a valuable skill to have, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. And you know, these principles, they apply to so many other areas of life. It's not just about handling difficult customers at a restaurant. It's about navigating those tricky social situations with grace and confidence. Couldn't have said it better myself. So to our listeners, remember, patience and politeness, those are your superpowers. And if you can master those skills in English, you'll be able to navigate pretty much any customer service encounter like a pro. And you might even be surprised how these skills can enhance your interactions in all areas of life. It's all about communication, empathy, and that human connection. Beautifully said. Well, on that note, we're wrapping up another deep dive into the fascinating world of language. We hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, happy language learning, everyone.